Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're taking a look at a brand new ink on the market. I got this little bottle from Exaclair, who is the distributor for uh, Girbon in uh, the US. They sent me an email a while back and were like, hey, would you like to check out a bottle of this new ink we have coming out? This is from the new Girbon uh, 1798 series, which if you're familiar with their inks are the, uh, the silver glittery version. A little bit of the silver glitter on the bottom there. It tends to get into solution pretty quickly. Of their 1670 line, which is gold glitter, this is the bottle that this will generally come in. This is like a little sample bottle sort of thing. I'm not sure if they even sell it in this amount. This is just the bottle they sent out to reviewers like uh, Brad Dowdy and I and probably of several others. Um, so this is the, uh, the Blue Ocean, which has a bunch of gold glitter there, you can see. This is a much darker color than the Kyanite de Nepal. And uh, so let's take a look at what this looks like on the page. Oh, I should say, uh, I haven't seen this actually go up for sale yet, but if it's the same price as the rest of the 1670 and 1798 lines, it'll be right around 30 bucks for this 50 mil uh, square bottle. So, so there you go. All right. And it looks like this on the page. I've been using this ink with this pen mostly, uh, which is a Franklin Christoph Model 40 Panther with a uh, double broad SIG nib on it. The double broad SIG is not super wet or anything, or at least this one isn't. Uh, it's a very manageable sort of nib, and I use it quite a lot. I've been really enjoying it with this ink. Uh, sometimes these uh, Gigi Herbans can be a little bit over the top in terms of sheen and glitter content. So the gold ones have a good amount of glitter. In fact, this Blue Ocean didn't have enough glitter, and so they added more in a second version. I really like the color of this, but... Uh, the, uh, the kind of Juno Paul is not overwhelming. There's some of the silver that's settled to the bottom there. And it doesn't have a huge amount of sheen or a huge amount of glitter. You do get a fair amount of shimmer. You can see there. There we go. That's, that's really hitting it right there. Uh, you see it a lot more when it dries, actually. When you put it down, uh, when you put it down wet, it doesn't seem to have a ton of glitter in there. I'm like, oh, there's no glitter. Nope, there totally is. Um. I have to say, I've been using that in this pen. I haven't been using it in, uh, you know, a fine nib or, you know, super dry nibs or anything like that because sometimes shimmer particles can cause, like, what I call a glitter dam. <laughs> so uh, it'll, you know, sort of settle at the bottom and it won't let ink pass or it'll clog up the feet a little bit. And you just have to prime it or dip it in some water and it'll get going again. This won't hurt your pen. Uh, but I haven't had any problem at all with this pen drying up. In fact, I haven't used this in a little while. Uh, it's been... I don't know, I wrote this uh, two, three days ago, and I haven't really used this much since, so let's see if it starts up. Yep, no problem at all. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I wouldn't worry about this ink clogging up your pen, actually. I think this is uh, doing a pretty darn nice job. So you get this silver glitter, and you also have this very nice blue color. I've seen some pictures online where this looks basically teal. That is not the way this ink looks in my experience, and... Uh, I mean, y'all can probably y'all can probably see that even on the inside of the bottle. Let's see if I can get some on the cap, but it just doesn't look doesn't look teal to me. It's uh, it's definitely a blue. It's sort of a bright blue, and as we see when I get to the uh, color comparisons, I don't really have anything that's exactly this color. I've got a couple that are mm, uh, sort of close, but this is a very cool color, and I think if they made this without the glitter, uh, people would really dig it too. So um, this is my regular Rhodia 80 pound paper, just in the slimmer number eight like list format. Uh, I like this pad. It's pretty good for writing short reviews and writing lists of things, and pretty good, pretty good stuff. Uh, very minor bleed on the 20 pound paper is what I found. Let's go ahead and look at that now. And it is here. Uh, you can see it's right underneath this uh, Meet Me in St. Louis. Uh, I don't have any problems with, um, with uh, like feathering or spreading really. It seems like it sort of stays where it belongs. I did have a couple of little skips, like it got a little bit, uh, little bit lean here. And it looks like it started out a little bit lean at the J bit, but uh, you know, no real problems. And then when you flip it over, you see a couple of bits here, like uh, this uh, top of this F. I think I had to go over that because it skipped a little bit. So maybe a little bit of skipping there from this uh, this ink. But I wasn't 
I think I wrote this first before I wrote the review, and so it just hadn't been used in a while, and that's why it was running lean. But the rest of it, you can see, is pretty darn good. Uh, some ghosting and such, but no ma no major bleed. Less, actually, than the KWZ, uh, and this is with a double broad SIG. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty good stuff. I'm really impressed with this Kyanite ink. I'm going to have to buy myself a big bottle of it, I think. Uh, let's see. Shading, Minor Sheen, and Shimmer. I'll show you a little bit of the sheen here on this card. Uh you can just see it like at the edges. This is a color ring card. Some of the other um, 17, well, yeah, so other 1798 inks I've used uh, will have like more sheen. Some of the um, some of the 1670 inks will have a ton of sheen, like uh, Rouge Hematite, which basically looks green. The, it does, you can't even see the red most of the time. But uh, this one's definitely blue, definitely has this nice silver shimmer. And uh, yeah, I haven't had any problem at all. It just seems to be fine. Uh, as far as flow, I'm going to say it's a solid medium. I, I haven't really had any flow problems. You saw a little bit on that 20 pound. I had a minor flow hiccup, but it didn't ever stop writing, which is cool. So that's good. Uh, but if you put this in a dry pen, it's probably not going to be great. Okay, let's do uh, the water test and then look at it on some different papers and then look at some color comparisons. All right. Let's blast some on here. A little bit on the water test. Nah, heck, let's put a little over here too, because why not? That's fresh. All right, let's mop it up. My handy dandy, very high tech. I get a lot of blue come off here. That's kind of fun to watch. It's like a little bit of a little bit of chromatography just uh, in front of our eyes. All right, so there we go. Finish mopping this up so I don't smear it around too much. Always blot, never smear. That's the that's the motto. All right, so a lot of blue here, but uh, still totally readable here. Actually, let's see if the can I see if the glitter stuck around. Uh, yeah, actually, you can probably see a little bit of glitter left there in the lines too. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, no big problem. It did get smeared a little bit here and here, but I think you could probably make it out. I'm not going to say it's water resistant or anything, but it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be possibly. So uh, pretty, pretty good. Here's the chromatography of the sink in case you're curious. And that is, it's got blue in it, man. <laughs> so not really anything else, just that blue. You'll see down here the shimmer, interestingly, for these shimmer inks just stays there. It doesn't really move up the paper. It's not being moved along with the dye content. Content, which I'm not surprised about, but uh, definitely a th you know an interesting little thing to take notice of. Didn't move a whole lot. Did come way off this line. There's not really anything left there, but uh, yeah, just a blue, blue. That's what we got in here. We got blue going on. So yeah, I'm not sure why it shows up teal in so many photographs online, but it's not blue. All right. Okay. Let's look at it on a couple of papers. Firstly, let's check it out here. This is a currently inked journal. This is a wheat straw paper. You can find this at the link below in the description. And then here's the uh, here's the line. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, and you can see the you can see a bit of shimmer on this as well. I use pretty diffuse light for these uh, these reviews, so you don't see a whole lot of shimmer. A little bit more in real life, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty good. Nice uh, nice blue color, I think. Then, you're in an ink journal. This is a Tomoe River ink journal. Again, you can find this at the link in the description. And here is the line for this. You see, I got this at the very beginning of May. So, uh, this is a pretty fun ink, I think. And I think it looks really nice, actually, on this Tomoe River. Uh, some inks will look better or worse on particular papers. I think this one actually looks a little bit better on Tomoe River than it does uh, elsewhere. But you also just really, you don't get a whole lot of sheen. There's a little bit of it in here, but... But not much. This is mostly uh, just a, you know, non-sheening sort of ink. Just a little bit of sheen here and there. Okay, let's look at some color comparisons. All right, let's go ahead and first compare it to uh, Giovanni's Blue Ocean, which is the other uh, sparkly blue ink that they made a few years ago. This is a very dark blue with gold shimmer. Another ink that I actually quite like. I, I like this blue color a lot. And um, a trick with these inks is that since they do settle so much with the shimmer, if you don't shake uh, the bottle up, you can just uh, sort of, you know, use a syringe to siphon off the color at the top and just get the ink, which is, uh, you know, some people dig that. They don't really care for the uh, care for the sparkles. Then here is Colorverse Cat, which I think is maybe the best sparkly blue ink out there, man. I love this one. Neither of these are particularly close to Kyanite du Nepal, uh, but uh, they both have kind of shimmer. And this one has got like almost holographic shimmer. I mean, really crazy and way more shimmer than either of these two, I think. 
Uh, but beautiful. You can find that uh, from Colorverse and Colorverse vendors. Man, that looks good. All right. I've actually had this. I have a little a little bottle of this, and I just kind of I keep it in a pen. All right. Uh, let's see. Here is Diamine's Asa Blue, which I think is pretty close to the Kyanite Du Nepal. Of course, no shimmer. None of the rest of these will have shimmer. We're done with shimmers. And then um, I also think that Kobe number 58, Kobe number 58, is uh, like reasonably close. It has more sheen, uh, but I think it's it's kind of close. It's not really, it's not on the money or anything. Neither of these are, but they're close-ish. So there you go. Uh, what else do we have here? We have like only a few more. Here's uh, Irishizuku's Kanpeki, which I quite like. I'm not a huge Irishizuku fan, but I do like Kanpeki. It's a lot lighter than Kainite du Nepal, though. And then let's uh, let's uh, just do these two together because they're the same maker. We've got Robert Oster's Bondi Blue, which is a beautiful blue with a bunch of sheen on it. Well, a you know, moderate amount of reddish sheen in there. Uh, Robert Oster really has sheen nailed down. I think it's kind of close, maybe a bit lighter, perhaps. And then, maybe even closer than that, we have uh, Robert Oster's Blue Water Ice. Blue Water Ice is closer, I think, to Kainite Du Nepal than most other things. Uh, it has some sheen, but I think it shades more. Kainite Du Nepal doesn't seem to shade much. It's fairly uh, saturated. So, if you want uh, more sheen and shading, go with Blue Water Ice. If you want shimmer, go with this one or Colorverse Cat. Although, this is probably easier to get and <laughs> higher volume than uh, Colorverse Cat. And then Bondi Blue, if you want to have one that's... Or, uh, or this, uh, this Kobe number 58, although these are pricey. So... There you go. All right, that's as close as I can get to Kainite du Nepal, actually. I've got a lot of blue, as y'all know, but I just don't really have anything that's identical, so that's pretty dope. Uh, if you have a, uh, a Giherban, like baseline ink that you think is pretty close to this one, let me know in the comments below, because I'd like to know what it is. Uh, I do like this ink quite a lot. It's entirely possible they don't have anything analogous to it, but maybe they do. I don't have a huge number of Giherban inks. All right, that's it. Thank you very much again to Execlair for sending out this sample. You can find this in uh, online vendors and stores and such, probably starting very soon. I think it's supposed to release the end of June, which is now, so it should be coming online very, very soon at around 30 bucks for a 50 ml bottle. All right, I'll see you later. Peace out.